Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created Phaser 3. Previously, we worked on refactoring some of the logic out of our battle scene into new components, and this was our player and enemy monster classes. And then we started to add some basic logic for uh, keeping track of health and doing damage. And so now that we have those basic components in place, we're going to start working on adding in our basic attack logic. So actually tying our player's attack classes into our main battle scene and start building out our basic state machine. If you missed the previous videos, there will be links in the video's description to the source code up to this point, as well as the complete source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up. So let's get started. All right, so to start working on our attack logic, the first thing we need to do is actually add in the logic for our attacks. Uh, so previously, we defined what we want our data structure to look like for our attack, so our ID and name and animation name. And when we create our monsters, we're passing an array of attack IDs. Um, but that's as far as we went with our attacks, and everything in our current scene is just kind of hard-coded. So what we actually want to do is we want to create this data and then pass this in uh, when we create our monster instances. Uh, so to do this, we're going to go ahead and keep all of our attack data in a JSON file. And then that way our data is a little bit more dynamic and we can add attacks at any time. And we'll have our code handle this JSON file. So then that way our code will stay the same and we can dynamically change our monsters based on this data file. So to do that, the first thing we're going to do is we'll come up to our assets folder. Let's add a new subfolder. We're going to call this data. And inside here, we're going to place a new JSON file. We're going to call this attacks.json. And so for our JSON, we'll have an array. And so now we'll need to define our attack uh, structure. So we have our ID, name, and animation name. So for ID, for our first attack, we'll have one. For our name, we'll call this Ice Shard, and so our name will be the attack name that shows in our battle menu, um, or when it shows when it says the monster used attack name. And then we will have our animation name. And so this is going to be tied to uh, the animation key uh, that gets created so we know which attack animation to play. And so we're just gonna call this Ice Shard, and that way we can make that part of our enum. And we'll copy the structure and we'll just make one more attack and we'll call this one slash. Uh, so we'll go ahead and clean this up. And likewise for animation name, we'll just do slash. All right, so now that we have our JSON file, what we need to do is we actually need to load this into Phaser. So let's jump over to our asset keys. We'll make a new asset key for this. And so what we'll do, let's just copy this code here. We'll paste it and we'll change our name. So we're going to do data asset keys. And let's call this attacks. All right. And so now that we have our asset key, let's jump over to our preload scene where we can load in our data. I just want to come down to the bottom of our create method. And we should add a quick comments where this is where we'll be loading our JSON data. All right, and so for our JSON data, uh, we can go ahead and use our phaser plugin to do that. So we're going to do this.loadjson, and then similar to our other assets, we just provide our uh, key. So this will be the unique key for this uh, data, and then the path to it. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do our data asset keys, and we will have our attacks. And then for our path, this is going to be assets, data, and attacks.json. All right, so one of the reasons why we're loading our JSON this way instead of manually importing it into our code is that way down the road, if we ever deployed out our game, uh, we could easily update our attacks JSON file and we wouldn't have to redeploy our application. Uh, so when we import the JSON file directly in our code, uh, that's going to have a tight coupling. And then that way, anytime we want to change that file, we'd have to rebundle our code, recompile it, and ship it out. Um, especially if we want to do things like if we want to minimize our code um, to reduce the file size. Versus if we use Phaser 3 to go ahead and load this JSON file, uh, what we could do later is we could host our JSON file at a specific URL and then tell JSON where that URL is. And then every time we just want to update that, we only update that one file uh, in our web server. And then every time someone comes to our game, they would have the newest data. 
So now that we loaded in our JSON data, what we need to do is actually update our monster instances to reference these attacks. So the first thing we need to do is in our battle scene, we need to update our attack IDs array for our player and enemy monsters. And so what this is going to do is the ID we provide here is going to map to our attack JSON file. And so for our enemy monster, they're going to be able to use Ice Shard, and for our player monster, we'll be able to use Slash. So then, after we've passed in those IDs, what we actually need to do is update our Battle Monster class to go ahead and use those attack IDs and map them to our attacks in our JSON file here. And so to do that, we need to go ahead and get a reference to our JSON data. And what Phaser 3 does is when you load in your data, it stores it into the scene cache. And so for your cache, Typically, we don't have to access it directly. Um, instead, when we call certain methods, uh, so with like our cache key, so our asset keys, uh, Phaser 3 will, behind the scenes, go ahead and grab the data it needs from the cache to construct our game objects. Uh, but with our JSON data, we need to access this directly so we can uh, get a reference to it. And so to do that, uh, what we'll do is we're going to do const, we'll make a new variable, so we'll do data. And then we're going to reference our phaser scene. So we'll do this dot scene dot cache dot json dot get. And now we need to provide the cache key for the item we want to pull. And so this is going to be our data, asset keys, and then our attacks. And so now we have our JSON data. And we know that our type of it should be the attacks because that's how we structured it. So we're just going to add in our type real quick. And for our attack, and it's going to be an array of attacks. So now that we have a reference to our cache data, we need to loop through all of our attack IDs. So we're going to do this, our monster details, our attack IDs, and then for each of our attack ID, we want to go ahead and find that attack ID inside that array. So what we're going to do is make a new variable, do const monster attack, and we'll set it equal to our data dot find. And so each element is an attack and we want the attack where the attack ID matches the current attack ID that we're loop looping through in our array. Uh, so what find will do is it's going to go ahead and return the first element array that matches our predicate that we provide. So basically we want our attack IDs to be equal. And if it's found, it's going to return that attack. And then what we'll do is just to make sure it does exist, we're going to check if monster attack does not equal undefined. And if it doesn't equal undefined, we're going to add it to our attacks array. So we'll do our monster attacks and we'll push and we'll push in our monster attack. Uh, so we probably also want to add in some type of data validation when we're grabbing this data. Uh, but for the time being, since we're structuring it and it's very minimal, we're not going to do that. But uh, if you ever want to have other people help work on your game and this data file gets bigger, we'd probably want to validate that each of these objects has the required properties when we load it in. So with our battle monsters now updated to actually have attacks, what we need to do is in our battle menu, uh, we had a to do for updating our attack names as well as updating our monster name. And so what we'll need to do is we're going to need to pass in a reference of our current active player monster to our battle menu. So then that way we can dynamically update the proper text. So what we're going to do is if we jump over to our battle scene, uh, when we create our battle menu instance, we're going to also go ahead and pass in our active player monster. And then what we'll need to do is we'll come back to our constructor uh, for our battle menu and we'll go ahead and add in our monster. So we'll do active player monster. And we're just going to go ahead and add in our param. So let's copy this. And so this is going to be a battle monster. And then what we'll want to do is we'll just want to go ahead and store a reference to that. So we're going to do this active player monster will be equal to the value passed into our constructor. And then we'll go ahead and add that here. And we'll go ahead and add in our type. 
All right, so then if we come down to our to-do, so when we create our main battle menu, uh, we have our to-do for updating our monster name. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And we're going to fix that right now. Uh, so it'll be no longer monster asset keys. It's going to be this active player monster. And we're going to go ahead and grab our name property. And now we just need to go ahead and update the text for our attacks for our player monster. So if we come down to our create monster attack submenu, uh, when we create our game container, we're adding in our text game objects. And so we have a hard-coded slash, growl, and our two attacks that the monster doesn't have yet. So what we'll do is we're just going to make a new variable uh, to store our attack names. So we we'll make a const attack names. We'll set that equal to an empty array. Uh, for our type, we're going to go ahead and make this a string array. And then what we're going to do is loop through all of our attack names uh, for our player monster, and we're going to add them to this array. And if we don't have four, uh, what we'll do is we'll just add in our placeholders. So we'll just do a for loop. We're going to do let i equal zero. If i is less than four, we're going to go ahead and increment i. And so inside our for loop, we'll do our attack names, and we'll push... And we'll do this active player monster attacks and we'll do I and then we're going to make sure that it actually exists and we'll do name. Otherwise, we will do our placeholder. And so with the arrays, if you have an index that doesn't exist on your array, it'll have it'll return undefined. And so we're just making sure that this object actually exists when we reference our name property um, that we don't get any errors. And then otherwise, we'll go ahead and add in our placeholder. So with our new uh, attack names array, what we need to do is just update our values here. So we'll do attack names, and we'll have zero for our first index, and we'll do that for the same for the other ones. So we'll have index one, two, and then three. All right, so we jump over to our battle scene. What we should be able to do is we go into our fight menu. We'll now see that our player only has our slash attack. And then if we jumped back to our battle scene, if we went ahead and added in two, or actually one, uh, what should happen is we come to our fight scene, you'll see now we have slice and ice shard. All right, so now we've wired in the data for our battle scene uh, to pass in our attack data to our battle menu. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to start adding in some of our basic uh, battle flow logic. And so if we come down to our update method, uh, currently when a player selects a move, we're hiding our monster attack submenu, and we're just playing some text on the screen that your monster attacks the enemy. And so what we're going to do is let's go ahead and get rid of that logic, and we're going to do this, and we're going to call a new private method so we're going to do handle, battle, sequence. And then let's go ahead and create this method. And so at the bottom of our class, go ahead and add in our private method. And so in our handle battle sequence method, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to outline our general battle flow. And so for our battle, what will happen is um, after we select an attack, uh, what we do is we then would choose a random attack for our enemy monster or have some type of AI. Once both monsters have chosen their attacks, we would show attack used. Uh, so this would be our info text like Iguana Ignite used slash. And then we want to do a brief pause um, because we're not going to require the player to provide input. Um, instead, we would just wait a second so the player can read the screen, then transition. Uh, then we want to start doing some of our animations. So the first thing we would do is we'd play our attack animation. And we'd do a brief pause between the end of the animation and our next animation. And then what we would do is we want to show the monster taking damage so that they would flash to show they got hurt. We would also do another brief pause. And then we would want to go ahead and show our health bar being updated. Uh, so we'd play our health bar animation with another brief pause and then finally what would happen is once we did with that we would transition to our other monster and repeat the process um, then that way whoever went first the other monster would now attack
All right, so for our battle sequence, uh, the first thing we need to do is go ahead and have one of our monsters attacks. Uh, so for the time being, we're going to go ahead and just have our player attack first, um, and then later on we'll refactor and add in logic to uh, use like a speed stat or do like a random of choosing who attacks first. So we're going to make a new private method, and we're going to do player attack. And so we'll start abstracting some of that logic into this new method. And so... We'll go ahead and add that right below here. And so inside our player attack method, uh, this is where we're going to go ahead and update our text that we want to show in our battle menu. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll do this, we'll do our battle menu, and we'll do update info pane way for input. And so for in here, uh, we'll go ahead and provide our message. And so we're going to have our current active player monster. We'll get its name and we'll say used and now we want to select the attack name so we're going to do this active player monster dot attacks and and then what we'll need is we'll need to know the index of the attack that was actually used and so for the time being we're just going to do zero and we'll have to add in that logic and then so we want to go ahead and grab the name all right and then what we we'll want to do is then we provide our callback and so inside our callback, uh, we want to simulate that brief pause. And so to do that, we're going to go ahead and do this dot time to reference our uh, scene and time plugin. Then we're going to go ahead and add a delayed called. And what this will do, it allows us to provide a callback um, that will phaser will go ahead and invoke after a set number of milliseconds. Since it's going to create a timer event to the, go ahead and trigger this logic. And so we'll just go ahead and wait half a second and for our callback so when this event gets triggered uh what we'd want to do this is where we want to update our active enemy player our active enemy monster to take damage so if we come up to here let's just go ahead and copy this logic here we'll paste that inside our callback and then once our enemy's now taken damage this is where you'd want to actually have our enemy attack so let's go ahead and make a new method we'll do enemy attack and then let's go ahead and define that. And so now inside here, uh, it's going to be very similar logic. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this block, go ahead and paste it, and we are going to say for our message, we're going to say foe, and then we'll get the active enemy monster name. And we'll say used, and then our active enemy monster and for our active enemy monster, we'll just go ahead and default to the first attack, and we'll do the name. And then so for our callback here, we'd actually want to do our active player monster will take damage. And then what we'll want to do is we'll want to show our battle menu so we can select another attack. So we'll do this battle menu, and we'll show our main battle menu. All right, so then let's come up to our create method, and let's get rid of our logic for where we're damaging our monsters from the get-go. We're going to tie it to our logic here. And then what we need to do is we actually need to update that index that we discussed. So for that, we're going to have to add a new property to our class. Uh, so let's go ahead and copy this logic here. We'll go ahead and paste it. And we're going to do active player attack index. And this is going to be a number. And then what we'll do is in our init method, We'll go ahead and set that to, we'll do negative one to show that we've not selected attack yet. And then what we need to do is after the player selects an attack, this is where we'll need to go ahead and update that value. So we come back to our update method. After we've chosen our attack, what we'll do is we'll do this active player attack index is going to be equal to this our battle menu and then we will do our selected attack and then what we're going to do is we're just going to add a safeguard where if that attack index does not exist on our player monster we're going to go ahead and return so we'll do this and we'll do our active player monster and we'll grab our attacks and we'll do this active player attack index 
and we'll go ahead and return. Uh, so the reason we're doing that is for our fight, we are populating our additional options with these placeholders. And so we want to make sure when the player selects them, we don't actually do anything. All right. And then actually, let's go ahead and move our council log below that line. So then that way, we only log a message if we actually have a selected attack. All right, so if we come back down here, let's go ahead and replace this logic here. So we're going to do this, active player attack index. All right, so let's go ahead and test our logic. So if we go into fight, if we use slash, we'll see our monster uses slash. We see that the foe used ice shard. Oh, and then right after we attack, it does another attack. We hit the space bar again. Um, so what we need to do is let's come back to our battle menu. Ah, yeah, so in our hide monster attack submenu, uh, what we need to do is we actually need to go ahead and update our state. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll do this, and we'll do our active battle menu, and we'll set it equal to our active battle menu, and we will do our battle main. Okay, so now if we go back to our scene, let's test again. Let's do fight. We do slash. I'm going to not use slashed. We see our animation. We see the ice shard attack. And then it'll come back to our battle menu. All right, with that, that brings this video to an end. In our next video, we're going to continue working on our battle logic uh, for attacking. And we'll add in checks to see if our monsters, when they take damage, if they've been knocked out. And if they are, we would transition to the end of our battle. Uh, so as a reminder, there's a link in the description of the video to the Queen source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please see some of the links on your screen now.